Hello everybody, hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back today with a kitchen tour for you. This is going to be a tour of my kitchen that I have made over on an extreme budget. I think I've done up my entire kitchen for under £100. It's been a complete transformation, just basically using some paint, some bits of wood, some things that I've found to give it a complete refresh, which I'm really pleased with. So I hope you like it too. If you haven't already, I've already filmed some videos of the process. I apologise if you can hear the wind outside. It's blowing a gale out there. And it's actually howling. But yeah, I filmed a few videos already. One of them was how I painted my kitchen cupboards, and then the other one was painting the kitchen tiles, ripping out some cupboards, adding some shelving which is here, giving it a bit of a refresh. So you can watch those if you haven't done so already, I'll link them in the description box for you. But now we're going to just go through everything in the kitchen, I'll tell you where it's from, how I did it and hopefully you will enjoy. Before we get into the video do subscribe if you're new here, give it a thumbs up if you enjoy it and let me know in the comments down below what you think. Or you might want to grab yourself a drink as well, I've got a coffee on the go. Right, let's take you in from the door so you can see the overview of the space. So as you walk in, this is what you see. So it's quite a small kitchen. It's got units either side. These units were actually here when we moved in. And this kitchen is probably about 15 years old. It's a magnet kitchen and it's held up pretty well. The tiles, the kitchen, that was all here before. So really I've been working with what we've got here the floor as well, the floor was here existing. So for the kitchen, the first thing that I did was paint all of these cupboard doors using Wilco cupboard paint and Wilco primer. The full video will take you through all the process on how to do that, but this was about three years ago and I can guarantee you this stuff does not chip. I've not had any scratches or chips. It's really, really good. I've also done a Q&A on the process as well, so there's loads of information if you need it. Head down to the description box and it's all there for you. So on to, where should we start? Let's start down the far end and we'll work our way back. So the first thing that I did in the recent makeover was to paint the kitchen tiles. So these were a blue colour before and I've been using a tile paint by Rust-Oleum. Well, it's actually an all-purpose paint, so it's good for all kinds of surfaces, including tiles, and that's what I've been using. Now, I did make a few boo-boos along the way, the first one being ordering a 250ml pot, which was tiny and didn't last very long. It did about one coat of the entire kitchen, a thin coat as well, and then I ordered it again. I don't know what I was thinking, but I was in makeover hell, to be honest with you. <laughs> and so I ordered it again, so obviously that wasn't enough, and the roller seemed to be sucking it all up. It's very glue-like paint, it's not easy to work with, so you need to be patient with it and persevere. But I did persevere, I ordered a 750ml tin, which was much better, didn't finish that tin. So I would say for a kitchen around this size, start off with one of the big tins, the 750ml, see how you get on with that, and then go from there. And maybe you'll need to order a second smaller one, perhaps. Um, yeah, I did it completely the wrong way around, but you can learn from my mistakes so you don't have to go through the pain <laughs> that I went through. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have heard me moan a lot about the tiles, for which I apologize, but it's all done now. And um, the other thing to um, keep in mind when you are painting the tiles is the air bubbles in the paint as well. So I noticed that if you get bubbles in the paint, so don't shake the tin, stir it quite gently because the bubbles will start to appear in the tiles as you're painting them. Obviously I was going from a dark blue to a white color, so it was harder to do in terms of it being dark underneath. I'd say if you've got a lighter tile, it's probably going to be easier to reach the white colour that you want. Or if you've got a darker colour, maybe opt for a darker colour all-purpose paint. So going something like blue to grey would probably have been a little bit easier to get the coverage on. That took about five coats, to be honest with you, and I went round with a very fine brush just to um, touch up any details. But I'm letting it dry nicely. It's been on for a few days, but I don't want to sort of test scratch it until it's really dry. That's the secret, is to make sure it really solidifies before you do any little scratch tests. Because this is holding up so well, so I don't want to spoil the tiles now that I've painstakingly done all that painting. So yeah, um, good luck if you paint your tiles. Let me know how you get on with it. I've also heard that the Wilco tile paint comes highly recommended, so maybe check the reviews on both 
and see what you think. So starting at the back, I'm just going to address the elephant in the room, which is this crack on the ceiling. I'm waiting to see if the leak is still there. It's a rainy day today and no leak, but thankfully it is above the sink <laughs> if it does leak. But I'm just waiting to double check, make sure before I sort that out and I will just be screwing that back into the beam and then filling all that in. So that won't take me too long, hopefully. So on to what I've got here. So I've got this hanging planter that I've actually added some artificial plants into. These are all from Poundland. And up the top of the window here, this is a shower rail. This was only two pounds as well from Poundland. And I've just used some Ikea brackets here to hang that up with so that I can hang some trailing plants. I've got this terrarium here from New Look Home. And then we have a couple of these glass birds, which are really nice because they catch the light when that shines through in the afternoons. And these were a gift from my mum. And then down here, I've just got a couple of little, I think these were shot glasses that I've just got some things growing in. I'm not actually sure what these are, <laughs> but they look quite pretty on the windowsill. The shutters here are actually something that I dumpster dived or found out on the street. I've painted them white, chopped them in half so they're just for the bottom section of the window. It just gives us a bit of privacy um, from the gardens down below. Then we have this string of pearls that I actually bought from a plant shop in Devon and that's held up really well. I just have to remember to water it every now and then. And then onto this which is a hanging planter from Poundland that I actually did a DIY on. So that video is on my channel if you want to see some Poundland DIYs. And the cactus in there also is from Poundland. The mirror here is thrifted. I think it might have been Urban Outfitters originally, but that came from a charity shop. And I really like the way it actually reflects the cactus back here. Let's turn that around. Um, so onto these shelves. So these are made from scaffold board. I actually had these cut to size at my local timber yard. They were really helpful there. Really thorough, excellent service. Cost me £30 to get one long scaffold board chopped into four pieces. So I've got two more of these to do another project with. And the brackets I bought online from Amazon. Um, which are really nice because they go from above and scoop underneath. So if you want to go for brackets where you don't have anything underneath showing, which I think is quite a nice look, um, they're really handy. And also if you're going up against something like these ones, you've got the tiles below. Again, really handy for that so you don't need to drill into tiles. You can mount them from above. So depending on what your shelving situation is, they've got different options. They have got the ones with the brackets going below the shelf, but I just preferred those ones. Up here I've got a couple of mugs. I think these were just from charity shops. We have a Wedgwood bowl, like a fruit bowl. And um, I also left this on. I like the detail. I wanted that to be part of it in case you're wondering why I use that bit of the wood. I like the fact that it actually looks like scaffold boards. We have some vintage wine glasses. These are German wine glasses. And I really like the green glass on these. And then we have this sign that says, live more, worry less. It's in a frame from Ikea, which I got at a charity shop, I think it was. And then the frame inside is from Decenio, I think. All of the prints in my kitchen are from brands that I have worked with, so they are from previous ads. This here was a gift from my friend Luke. Um, this is a cactus-shaped bottle opener, along with this cactus here. If any of you saw my birthday vlog, when I reached into the bag, I spiked all my fingers on that. Um, so it has memories, <laughs> but um, love that. Really, really nice. And then we have this little um, watering can, actually quite handy for anything small and delicate. Down here I've actually got my succulent babies. So these are ones that I propagated, which I've done a video on. Again, if you're interested, that is on my channel. A few houseplant care videos are there for you to have a watch of. I really need to repot these at some stage, but they're coming on quite nicely. I think they'd do better if I did put them into individual pots. And they're on a serving bowl that again was from a charity shop and I just thought it worked quite nicely to kind of divide them up. Onto this uh, lemon juicer. So this is an Alessi lemon juicer. Oh, it's not for lemons, it's for any, uh, you know, oranges, whatever you want, limes, that sort of thing. I saw this when I was a kid in the Ab Fab kitchen. If any of you watch Absolutely Fabulous, I always admired it in their kitchen. Always wanted one of these and I absolutely love it. I think it's such a classic design piece. And then we have this cactus here in a basket that I picked up in my travels. I've forgotten where I was. 
but it was in one of my vlogs. So if anyone can remember, let me know in the comments. And then onto this wall, which um, has been stripped back now to the concrete underneath, which I've left exposed. Not everyone's taste, I'm sure um, a lot of people probably wouldn't want that look, but I absolutely love it. I just think it looks really cool, nice and modern, and it gives a softer colour to the white tile, which is quite harsh, it's quite bright. So yeah, went for this, and I just think it looks fab. It's really smooth concrete. We have this cat plate, which is from a pottery down in Devon. It was actually from the rejects pile, the, um, is it called seconds, where the glaze hasn't gone quite right. So picked that up um, for a bargain price, but it is a um, lovely handmade little plate. And I really like the colors uh, going on there as well. And also the circle matches nicely with this mirror, which is a new mirror from Primark. These are only 10 pounds, which I think for a statement mirror like that just looks fantastic. It's conveniently reflecting the, oh, look at this weather. Sorry if you can hear it. It's conveniently reflecting the crack in the roof. So let's um, reframe, that's better. That looks a bit nicer for you. And then on to this area here, it's kind of like a breakfast bar. So it had nothing going on underneath. I was actually just keeping some chairs under there and shoving stuff underneath, which wasn't working great. So what I've done here is added some wine crates and an old shelf that I had in the bathroom. All of these are things that I've obtained. I think they were all free to be honest with you. This um, was free as well. I found that out on the pavement and painted it with some farrow and ball paint in the colour Pigeon. And then I screwed on these legs from an Ikea unit that I had, but I double stacked, so I didn't need the second lot of legs. Saved them for a rainy day, excuse the uh, pun, and they've worked really nicely. I had to stack them up a bit, but that just gives it a bit more support. On the top here, I've got this tray um, that was from a, I think that was from an Ikea event that I went to. Yes, it was, that came in a goodie bag, so I was very lucky to get that because it fits perfectly at the top. So if ever I do like a few coffees, I've got a little tray um, that fits really nicely. And then we've got all my favorite mugs out here. So it's a nice way to display them. This is essentially an old CD rack, I think. So if you have got an old CD rack and you don't use your CDs anymore, that could be a little upcycle idea for you. And then here, using the crates, I've just kind of like pieced them in how I thought they'd fit best. So it's no real like rhyme or reason to this, but I quite like the fact that you end up with this extra gap in here that will fit these storage jars on their sides, which I think is quite cool. And then we've got some plates here, oversized mug from Flying Tiger, and then um, I worked with Wilco's earlier in the year, and so I had some mason jars left over from that, and also some more jars down here which have got some porridge oats and almonds and that sort of thing. So I've got some to fill up and organise. I might even get the label maker out if I'm feeling extra organised. And then onto the corner, which is the fridge. Nothing too exciting about this, apart from it's got our fridge magnet collection on. So whenever I'm on my travels, I do like to pick up fridge magnets. And I've been that sad that I've kind of organized them a bit. I could even do this a little bit better, I think, but we start off up here in the UK. Let me know in the comments if you spot anywhere that you've been to. And we go on to Germany, and then we go on to Eastern Europe. We've got Austria here, then Italy, Spain. We've got the south of France, Monaco, loads of fab holidays. We've got Ibiza, Lanzarote, Tenerife. We've got the islands going on, Mallorca, New York City, Egypt, all kinds of places. Then on to further field places like Japan, China, Dubai, and Australia down here and Thailand there. So yeah, I love fridge magnets. I know they're quite tacky. The tackier the better for me. Um, they're just all really fun memories of all the trips that we've been on. Up here we have this planter from Flying Tiger that I picked up recently and the trading plant is also from there. This was only three pounds and I got the trading plant when they had their two pound sale. So that's a fiver in total. Back here we have a white crate that's just got fruits, it's a bit of everything actually. There's all sorts hiding in there. We've probably got some avocados, we've got some onions, classic red onions. I mean, <laughs> every kitchen has those, right? We've got um, some protein powder, that sort of thing. Things just get slung in there out of the way. And then we've got a print up here that is by, I think that's Decenio as well, in another of those Ikea frames. So onto the other side, we have the um, top cupboards on this side. Oh, I forgot to say that originally these cupboards were 
up there which I ripped out so if you haven't seen the video already that's what the situation was before and I'm really pleased with how the open shelving has actually opened up the space along with the white tile paint I just think it looks much wider in here now it was quite enclosed before so that's feeling a lot better this here is another Poundland DIY and I was going to put some spice jars on there but I decided to opt for a couple of miniature succulents cactus and these cookie cutters which I think are really cute they came from H&M home we have an Alessi kettle here I do have an electric kettle but this is such a nice design piece as well just love that really classic and then on to the toaster again um, I did work with Russell Hobbs just to let you know um, but works really nicely it's toaster and also um, Nutribullet as well, um, which hadn't been using, but then discovered it again recently and have been making some more smoothies with that. And then over here, we have this shelf that um, was something, again, that I found out on the street and rescued. Painted it in some gloss paint, and it's very narrow, but quite nice for displaying things in. So up here, we have this miniature canvas from a friend of this really nice palm tree design. And then up there, we've got some small bowls that came from Japan. So I went to an island in Japan and they had a pottery and picked up quite a few of these little bowls while I was there Which I just think are really sweet. Don't really use them for anything. So I've tucked them up the top and then we have um, a plant from I think that was from Lidl. I think it was from Lidl. Um, we have this which came from one of my travels from a homeware shop this little ladybird pot and then um, this print is from Poster Lounge as is this one and the champagne one down there, again from another collaboration previous ad. We have some little planters here that were from a charity shop with some small cactuses in and a fake one here and then an Alessi bottle opener which has the red and the black playing card design on it and I've switched it round to the black because She's teeming with the theme, aren't you, Anna? Thank you very much. On to a bin, um, very boring for recycling from Ikea, but does the job really nicely. I think as far as bins go, this is cheap and cheerful, but kind of looks all right. It doesn't really draw the eye and it's not stainless steel, so you don't have to worry about polishing it or anything like that. And then the yucky recycling thing down there, we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> so that, oh, daffodils. Um, these are just from Lidl 95p and they are in this cool little container that's like a measuring jar that's um, a Pyrex kitchen lab. Have I shown you everything? Oh, the light as well. So we replaced the light. I was working with Fantastic Services and they very kindly did that for me. And the light itself came from Amazon. Tricky to show you. This is a daylight LED. So it's making the kitchen so much brighter and the light that it's um, producing is white light. So it's quite cold, but for me, I love it because it just feels perfect for the kitchen space. And this is the view looking in the other direction at the uh, filming lamps there, in case you're wondering what that is in the hallway. But yeah, so there we go. So it's a small kitchen, so really making the most of the space in here. I mean, I know that there can be much smaller kitchens than this, don't get me wrong, but it's not the biggest kitchen, but I do feel like the redesign in terms of the colours in here, the light, has all really helped with making it feel a little bit more spacious and a bit more organized. So that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this look around my kitchen. Let me know what you think of it and let me know um, what you think of doing a kitchen makeover for under £100 if you fancy doing the challenge yourself. I think it's really worth it. I know um, that a kitchen refurb is a lot of work, it's a lot of mess and it's a lot of money. So I've saved myself a fortune. I'm going to get a few more years out of this kitchen yet and bearing in mind that it is already 15 years old, I'm really happy. Better for the environment, better for my wallet. I'll be going on some nice holidays and getting some more fridge magnets with the money that I'm saving. But yeah, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. All the information on everything that I've shown you will be in the description box down below so go down there and have a good read if there's anything that's caught your eye or if there's anything that you want more information on there's lots more videos down in the description box that you can click through to have a watch catch me over on instagram it's mr carrington also mr carrington home which is where i show you other areas of my house i'd love to see you over there too thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon bye